Jesse here in fabulous downtown Las Vegas, where as we all know, they blow things up when they get too old. Why do you think they ran me out of town? But believe it or not, there are actually a few things still standing today in Las Vegas that predate last Wednesday. So come with me and I'll show you 10 interesting old things in Las Vegas. The history of Las Vegas actually dates all the way back to the mid 1800s when it was an important stop on the old pioneer trails going west because the name Las Vegas means the meadows in Spanish. And at one time there was actually grass and trees and a natural oasis here, which is basically the only reason some poor stubborn souls decided to stay here. Well, this is the old Mormon fort. That's right, this is the oldest building in Las Vegas, built way back in 1855 by the first Mormon settlers. And they basically had to build a fort because, well, the Paiute Indians were understandably not too happy about all these white people trespassing through their lands. But it didn't last long. Even the industrious, hardworking Mormons couldn't handle this harsh desert climate and they bailed after a few years. But the fort they built still stands today, right smack dab in the middle of filthy, seedy, degenerate downtown Las Vegas. After the Mormons bailed, other pioneers traveling through stumbled on their abandoned fort and figured it would be worth using as a base camp for the settlement they planned on founding. Las Vegas was originally populated by a few ranchers who made a living selling supplies to travelers heading west until 1905 when the railroad announced it was going to be passing right through town. And that's when Las Vegas was officially incorporated as a city. And after that, a bunch of buildings went up. Unfortunately, most of those buildings were bulldozed a long time ago in the name of progress, but there are still a few random relics scattered randomly throughout town, like this old water tower. Okay, we're down here in a kind of rundown neighborhood in downtown Las Vegas, right off Charleston and 26th Street. And this old water tower is sort of tucked between, well, two houses on either side. And I don't know anything about the history of this water tower, or I don't even know for sure that it's super old, but it looks super old. And one time I was traveling around with a guy who's a kind of like a Vegas historian and his mother was uh, an extremely noted Vegas historian. And he said, he told me this was one of the original water towers from gosh, back when Las Vegas was first founded. I mean, I guess back then they had to pump water out of the Las Vegas spring and store it in tanks to use in their houses. So this presumably is part of the original Las Vegas infrastructure. I don't know what it's being used for now, but it's being very fiercely guarded by the neighboring dogs. Oh, better get out of here and head to the next location. Okay, so how about the oldest casino in Vegas? The Golden Gate opened in 1906 and it had the telephone number one. That's it, just one. Guess they had the first phone in town. And in the 116 years since it opened, the Golden Gate has survived the ups and downs of Fremont Street, but it's always been best known for its 99 cent shrimp cocktail. Let's go inside and see if we can still get one. Oh man, the shrimp cocktail's gone and it's probably $10 for a beer nowadays. That's Vegas for you. If you want a cheap drink, you gotta go someplace like this. This dive bar right down the street from that old water tower I showed you is a real prize winner. I know it looks like it's been boarded up since 1875, but I actually went here once after work for a drink, gosh, probably about 15 years ago. And at that time, well, it was rough. I mean, it had a bare concrete floor. It felt like you were just having drinks in somebody's garage, but it was open and it was really interesting. One of the people in the bar told me, as a matter of fact, that this right here behind the bar is the oldest tree 
in Las Vegas. That's right, the oldest tree in Vegas. I don't know if that's true, and I don't know of any way of verifying if that's true, short of cutting it down, but it certainly does look old. I mean, it's a huge tree. This is a tamarisk tree. If you're familiar with tamarisk, they're an invasive species that suck out all the groundwater. This is the biggest tamarisk I've ever seen. But whether or not it's the oldest tree in Vegas, I can't say. But I do know that Sunrise Liquors isn't the oldest bar in Vegas. That honor belongs to this place. Atomic Liquors opened way back in 1952. And originally there was a viewing deck on the roof so you could go up and watch the atomic bomb blast going off at the Nevada test site. Remember how they used to detonate all them above ground nukes back in the day, about 90 miles north of here? But there's a catch. Atomic Liquors actually closed for a year back in 2010 before the new owners bought it in 2011 and turned it into the hipster paradise it is today. So technically, this is the oldest continuously operating bar in Las Vegas. The Huntridge Tavern opened in 1962 and it's been open ever since. And unlike the Atomic Liquors, it was never subject to some douchebag hipster renovation. So it still has all the same crusty vintage decor inside. Let's go inside and have a drink. Wow, Campari and soda at a dive bar. How about that? Well, since we're over here anyway, we might as well make a stop at the oldest movie theater in Las Vegas. The Huntridge Theater opened in 1944, sat 950 guests, and was the first fully air-conditioned movie theater in Las Vegas. It was also said to be the first desegregated theater in Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas was pretty segregated back then. In fact, it was known as the Mississippi of the West. The Huntridge had a pretty good run for many years, even hosting the world premiere of a movie back in 1963. But eventually it sort of fell into decay and became a concert venue. Then one night back in 1995, just before a punk rock band called the Circle Jerks was about to play a show, the roof collapsed. Okay, I guess when it was built back in 1944, uh, that was World War II, steel was being rationed, so they couldn't put steel roof beams in. They had to build the beams out of Douglas fir, which after 51 years of baking in the broiling Mojave Desert sun, finally gave way, the roof collapsed, and the Circle Jerks had to do their concert out in the parking lot. Apparently they were able to patch it back together though because the Huntridge didn't end up officially closing until 2004. But it's been sitting here derelict ever since then, ripe for some kind of hipster transformation. <laughs> and I should note, there is one other older movie theater in Vegas, but it was turned into a gift shop, oh gosh, decades ago. And well, presumably the Huntridge still has its theater screen and seats inside. I don't know, I've never been in there, but I sure would love to. Anybody watching this can get me in. Call me. Okay, so we've been to the oldest bar in Vegas. We've been to the oldest theater in Vegas. Now what about the oldest restaurant in Vegas? Well, I was really surprised when I googled oldest restaurant in Vegas and this place came up way down on Boulder Highway. El Torito opened in 1954 and it was actually the first location of the El Torito chain. Okay, if you've ever been to California and you went to an El Torito, there's like 69 of them, this was the first one. And I guess this was kind of responsible for popularizing Mexican food. I mean, back in 1954, well, people were, were still eating white bread and spaghetti and jello molds, whatever they ate back then. 
Well, El Torito was kind of the first place to popularize things like margaritas and tableside guacamole and all those amazing things that make Mexican restaurants so awesome. Oh my God, now I'm getting hungry. I really don't have time <laughs> to get a bite, but I gotta go in. Okay, wait a minute. First of all, that place had a really long wait. And when I finally sat down and was reading the menu, they had the history of the place. And it said it opened in 1975 by some woman named Betty. What I read on Wikipedia is that this place was opened in 1954 by a guy, oh, I can't remember his first name, Joseph, last name Cano, C-A-N-O. I don't even know if he was Hispanic. I always thought if a name ended in a vowel, especially in Vegas, it meant you were in the mafia. Anyway, the information that I got online was from the Las Vegas Advisor, which is a pretty reputable website, and Wikipedia. They both said this place opened in 54 and was the first location of the El Torito chain. The menus in there and the backs of the waitresses' t-shirts told a different story. So I'm not really sure what's going on, but either way, we're not even in Vegas. We're in Henderson, okay? Nowadays, yes, it's all kind of one big metropolitan sprawl, but back in the good old days, it was a very distinct city from Las Vegas. So let's go to the oldest restaurant in Las Vegas. Okay, this is the oldest restaurant in Las Vegas. Bob Taylor's Ranch House. Okay, this place opened in 1955 and it was a pretty big deal. It was also way out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, to put things in context, I just drove 33 miles from El Torito to Bob Taylor's without ever once leaving the urban sprawl. Like I said, back in the day, Henderson and Las Vegas were completely distinct towns. Now it's just one big metropolitan cancer. And well, back in the day, I guess Bob Taylor's ranch house used to be way out in the desert north of town. So it was kind of like an expedition to go there. But even though it was remote, I guess it had really good stakes because people like the Rat Pack used to come out here. Okay, I actually came here once myself about eh, 22 years ago and had dinner. And I don't remember what I had here. I mean, I'm sure I had a steak and I probably had a potato and I probably had a salad or some kind of vegetable and I'm sure it was awesome. And it still kind of has that old ranch house appeal with these really cool old, well, it looks like olive and mulberry trees in the front yard, just like it was back in 1955, except for the fact that there's a freeway running next to it now. Uh, and the fact that it's completely surrounded by suburban development. Remember, I said this place used to be way out in the middle of the desert. Well, Las Vegas has really grown. Ah, it's real windy up here. Okay, let's get in the car and drive back down into the heart of Vegas and go check out the oldest building on the Strip. The world famous Las Vegas Strip is constantly reinventing itself, blowing up old hotels to make way for shiny new casinos. So it's surprising that there's anything at all from the old days left standing. I mean, the Flamingo Hotel was built in 1946, but it's been so extensively renovated that there's hardly anything left of the original building. And besides, there's an even older building still standing on the Vegas Strip. The Little Church of the West was built in 1942, and it's basically your prototypical cheesy Vegas wedding chapel. In this case, kind of designed to look like a rustic old wooden church in a small town mining camp. But apparently it wasn't too rustic for Elvis Presley and Miss Anne Margaret to get married in in the movie Viva Las Vegas. That's right, if you've seen Viva Las Vegas, this is the church where Elvis and Anne Margaret, who a lot of people say was really his true love, got married. And you can actually still get married here today. They still accept bookings, even though they are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. I know the light's kind of bad right now, but you might be able to read on that sign. Built 1942, placed on the National Register of Historic Places by the United States Department of the Interior. 
And it's right by the airport. Okay, it says private area, no admittance, and there's a lock on the gate, but the gate's wide open. So I'm just gonna sneak a quick peek because I'm really curious to see what this place looks like. I mean, you're probably wondering how did this place manage to <laughs> stay in existence all these years with all this redevelopment in Las Vegas? Well, that's because it was moved three times. It was originally located down at the New Frontier Hotel, which used to be across the street from what's today the Wynn. Well, when they built the fashion show mall, they had to jack it up. Helicopters coming in. Yeah, they had to jack it up and move it. Uh, I guess they moved it across the street here to what used to be the Hacienda, where it sat for about 20 years. And then when they started building the Mandalay Bay in 1995, they jacked it up again, moved it across the street, and it's been sitting here for the last 27 years. But even though it's been jacked up and moved three times, I'm pretty sure this is the original building, and supposedly the pews in there are the original pews. And I think those uh, Victorian lamps up there are supposed to be original too. Oh my gosh, what a cool place to get married. Matter of fact, it looks like somebody did just get married here. You can see there's still rose petals all over the ground. Golly! <laughs> I hope it lasts. <laughs> Well, if their marriage is anything like the buildings I've been showing you on this tour, it just might stand a chance. Okay, so how about the oldest school in Las Vegas? <laughs> I bet you didn't even realize that there were schools in Las Vegas because, well, you only need to know how to count to 21, and it's not like you need to know how to read very well to make a good living parking cars or stripping. But all those valet attendants, strippers, casino bosses, and mafia enforcers have families and their kids need a place to go to school. This is the first high school in Las Vegas, built in 1930. And believe it or not, it's still an operating high school. There's still students here. Nowadays, it's a performing arts academy. In fact, I think it's been a performing arts academy for a long time. Uh, if you've ever seen the video, you remember that 80s song? Oh, Mickey, you're so fun, you're so fun, you blow my mind. Hey, Mickey, hey, Mickey. Ow. Well, anyway, the woman who sang that song, Tony Basil, I think is how you say her name, she went to high school here. And matter of fact, in that video, if you go watch that video, all the girls that are wearing the cheerleader outfits dancing around, they're wearing Las Vegas high school cheerleading uniforms. Check it out. Anyway, this is a really cool art deco building right in the middle of downtown Vegas. Eh, not too far from all the crazy shenanigans and goings on down on Fremont Street right down there. I mean, can you imagine what a weird place to go to high school? But plenty of kids have gone to high school here and you can see there's this really cool display of all the different graduating years. I guess they all had their little symbol like, well, you can see going all the way back to 1941, theirs was pretty minimalist, 41. And then, oh, the war years, 42, 43, 44, 45, paying tribute to those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. 46, there must have been some kind of comet. Anyway, every year has like a different emblem. <laughs> but my favorite one is, oh, where is it? Oh, here. <laughs> 1951. How about that? It's got a big old mushroom cloud on it. Because like I said earlier, when we were down the street here at Atomic Liquors, well, back in those days, they were blowing nukes up above ground at the Nevada test site, not even 90 miles northwest of here, so. It's a very fitting class emblem. But yeah, going to high school in Vegas does seem like it would be pretty weird. And yeah, it does seem slightly pointless studying Shakespeare and going to college when you can get a job right out of high school making stacks of cash every night. And speaking of that, how about the oldest strip club in Las Vegas? The Palomino Club was opened in 1969. How about that? The most noteworthy thing about the Palomino Club is that it's the only strip club in Las Vegas where you can see totally nude dancers and have a full bar. All the other strip clubs in Vegas can only serve liquor if they're topless, if they're fully nude, well, they can only serve juice and soda. But the Palomino Club has been here so long, it got grandfathered in and they make a pretty big deal out of the fact that, well, you can see it all and drink whatever you want. Yeehaw! I've actually been here before and it was wild. Uh, my personal recommendation is 
If you're tired of getting hosed at those fancy, expensive strip clubs down over by all the big hotels, is to come here instead, see what you want, drink what you want, and then go across the street to Jerry's Nugget for a $13.99 surf and turf special. Now that's something straight out of old Vegas. Okay, so we've seen everything from the oldest water tower to the oldest titty bar in Vegas, but what about the oldest house? I know I started out the video at the old Mormon fort, but what about the oldest single family residence in Vegas? Well, I tried looking it up and I couldn't find anything. I mean, I myself used to live in a house here that was built in 1933, and that had to be one of the older houses in town, but it certainly wasn't the oldest. I know there was a bunch of old historic railroad cottages down uh, when they put the railroad through in 1905, and they actually jacked those up and moved them to the same park where the old Mormon fort is. But unfortunately, that park isn't open today, so I can't go check them out. So instead, I'm here. Okay, this is one of those funky little hidden secret gems tucked away right in the middle of Vegas that, well, I just love finding out about. Unfortunately, there's so many dang bushes in front of this fence that we can hardly see it. So I'll just have to climb up on top of my car to show you. Okay, on the other side of this fence, well, you might be able to see there's a little green house tucked away in there between the Marriott in the distance and the half-finished Fountain Blue and the Channel 8 news station. Okay, what's the big deal about this little greenhouse? Well, it was Howard Hughes's house. Okay, you know, Howard Hughes, the eccentric billionaire who lived in a suite on the top floor of the Desert Inn and never cut his fingernails and never shaved his beard and collected his urine in jars? That Howard Hughes? Well, when he first came to Vegas in 1953, he leased this house and, well, he owned it until he died. He died in like 1974. He didn't live there the whole time. Remember, he lived on the top floor of the Desert Inn where he kept the drapes closed to keep the light out and he bought the casino across the street because the light on their sign was bothering him and he even bought the dang news station because he wanted them to play whatever movies he wanted to see. Anyway, he was living at the Desert Inn but he still owned this house for all those years and well, finally, I think he died in like 72, 73, 74, I forget, but in 1976, they finally did go inside this house and it had been it had been sealed up for gosh over 20 years since he lived there and when they went in they found like a half-eaten loaf of bread on the counter and little boxes of cereal in the cupboard and like unopened toothbrushes i mean can you imagine i would give anything to be able to go in and poke around inside that house and again i just think it's so interesting how it's just tucked away here between well, this is kind of like a residential hotel, I guess. And then all these other places, <laughs> including the dang news station that he once owned. Fun fact, they also shot some scenes for the movie Casino in this house. Okay, if you ever saw that amazing movie Casino about Las Vegas, it's like three hours long. Martin Scorsese movie starring Robert De Niro and Sharon Stone. Well, if you remember Sharon Stone, Robert De Niro's wife, Ginger, beautiful. Kind of a hustler well she has this loser heroin addict boyfriend and she goes over to visit him and those scenes were filmed in this house right here <laughs> right next to this residential motel i don't know i just think that's really interesting and well i hope you found that place and all the places i showed you today to be interesting because boy howdy <laughs> i sure did and moreover Golly, I must have spent about $40 on gas just driving around. Remember I told you it was like 33 miles just from El Torito to Bob Taylor's ranch house. And I'm still confused about that El Torito thing. You know, I was thinking about it while I was driving and okay, so maybe the guy who founded the El Torito chain did found, start the restaurant in 1954 and then he probably ended up selling it and that's when the current owners took over in 75 because that's what the back of all the waitress shirts said, 1975. So... Either way, it wasn't really in Las Vegas, so I'm glad I made the long trek out to Bob Taylor's because, boy howdy, that place is just cool. I don't care who you are. In fact, all the places we went to today were really cool, and yeah, you know, <laughs> there's Vegas for you, building shiny new things every five minutes. But if you know where to look, you just might still be able to find one of those old hidden gems <laughs> lurking in the bushes, <laughs> tucked away. <laughs> 
between something and something else.